So we got this switch here from a customer. Um, the notes are basically it can't switch on despite being left on charge for a good few days. Um, doesn't really power on in the dock. So basically just doesn't boot. Now I've just started writing a very detailed wiki on Retro 6. So if you go to retro6.wiki, Nintendo Switch, then you'll see I'm starting to go through all of the the technical know-how that I've gained from working on switches, broken down everything we need to do, how you can repair them, how you can boot them without anything, uh, give some real information to the community because all I see online is people just simply swapping the MT92 chips blindly, the BQs blindly, the P13 USBs. No real knowledge is being used to figure out what actually needs to be done. So similar to my Game Gear one where I break down every single step, I've started that now with the Switch. So we're going to kind of reference this as we work on this board. So we can have this up here to go through what we need to do. But if this is a no power board, we're just going to start from the top, which is basically the first stage boot. What we want to check is the output to the BQ chip, so the VSYS rail, has no shorts on first. So we'll do that to start with. And I always start with this step because this allows us to test for dead shorts, which could kill any kind of chips or work we are doing on the console. You can pick any ground point, but I tend to find the uh, USB shield is a good ground point. You don't risk ripping pads off of anything on the board. And it's not seen when the console's back together. So if we attach now to the VSYS output, this is basically a 4.2 volt output that goes to the rest of the system after the BQ charger has regulated it from the battery. We can bypass this for testing for dead shorts and we can just put the ground on the black lead and the four volts on this lead. And just looking at my bench power supply, I can confirm there are no shorts. It's drawing basically nothing. So if we scroll down the guide, you can see uh, we've injected. I basically get this exact thing. I'm not seeing any current draw. I'm seeing 001. The next step is to attempt to boot this. So with these wires on, we haven't got a bypass resistor yet. So this will boot up partially and then turn back off. But what we should be able to do is when I connect power to uh, the VSYS lines, I can just go this side for now for easy contact. I should be able to turn on by shorting out these two pins at the top of the connector. And we can see there the current draw is 200 milliamps, which is normal. That's what we'd expect. So the system's pulling 200 milliamps. It's getting stuck in the first stage boot because it won't go past the first stage boot without either a bypass resistor on here, which we can do. But either way, the fact that this is booting up to this stage is a good sign. So by doing this, we have confirmed, you can see here, we should get about 195 milliamps, which is exactly what we get. We've seen this just. And now we could connect a battery to try and charge the system. So we have no shorts and we want to come off of the VSYS line and now go onto the battery line. So to do this, we simply disconnect the power, obviously. We're going to move this wire off of the VSYS now, because now we're assured that nothing on this line is shorting out further down the line. We're not going to blow up this BQ chip by powering through it. So now what we're going to do is attach the bench lead that we're going to power to, which in fact I don't need to do because I'm using my multimeter at the minute to just bypass this and touch on the board. So I'm just going to touch on this pad when we come to uh, power the board. But what we will need is these two test pins here. We need to just solder a resistor between them. So it wants to be ideally 10k. I've just got a 13k resistor here, just what I had handy. Uh, but any any resistor between like sort of 5 and uh, 15k is going to be fine. So be careful not to burn the battery connector. Apply a big wad of solder, especially if the resistor is too small like this one. 
and you can just do a solar blob to bridge the gap. You could use a radial resistor that's bigger as well, but that's got the job done. The bypass resistor's on. So we've got the bypass resistor on, we've got the ground lead. I'm just going to take my probe here and apply again the 4 volts onto this time the battery input. So now all we're doing is simulating the battery. So this lead now and what you see at the top here is effectively the current draw on if the system had a battery in. We've got a bypass resistor here to trick the switch into believing this is a real battery and it's got a good temperature. So when we try to boot now, we should see this fully boot. If so, there's something just very basic wrong with this console. So you can see 0.195, that's first stage boot. Now it should bump up to the 400 for second stage boot. So it's never getting to second stage boot. So that's not ideal. And it's definitely not getting there. So this is normally a sign either the EMMC is dead or the second stage regulators are not providing the right voltage. And we can see in the diagnostics part here that if we go to full boot from bench, which is what we've already done, in order to boot, we need the main core regulator, which may be faulty. The charger is unlikely to be a problem because it would have shut down if it was that problem. Could be these two regulators, could be RAM CPU. The most likely cause is either the core regulator is missing a voltage or the second stage regulator is. Hopefully it's not EMMC because that's not recoverable. You'd have to sort of um, jailbreak the switch and run something else. But if we scroll down, we've done all this, we've passed power into here. This is where we're going to apply power now anyway to power the board while we do the rest of the tests and leave it powered from the bench. You can see that we don't need the P13 or the MT92 to boot the system. So neither of these two chips will be the cause, 100%. There's no shorts, therefore nothing is pulling the 3.3 volt line down or anything else on the system. So these two aren't even needed to boot. We would get to um, second stage boot with an error if those chips were completely missing anyway. So we're not even going to look at those two chips. The P13 is just purely for docking and the MT is purely for battery charging. There's no other purpose to those two chips and we're not concerned about that at the minute because we're not even booting into an actual working system. So what we've done here is what we've already done. We have jumped between these, added the resistor and booted from a bench. So next up, we can test the charger charges. It's not really a problem. We can do that. Um, so we can do it just for completeness. So we will just connect up a battery to the system. And let me just take a USB-C meter tester in a sense. So basically it just tells you what power and voltage are being drawn. And you can see this is charging. So this is charging the battery 15 volts, half an amp. So there's nothing wrong with the USB connector. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the BQ chip. And we're getting system voltage in an attempt to boot. So with that known, we have effectively confirmed all of this nice and quickly, that all of the BQ chip works. Next up is powering permanently from this. So we need to bypass the battery, which means reinstalling the resistor, which is still there for us, and powering from the VBAT pin, which is what we're doing. We turn on with tweezers, and that's where we're up to. If we had max current draw, it would be a dead short. If we had 200 milliamps, then going to 400 or 500, and then going to sleep, it's fully working. Instead, we don't. What we seem to have here is um, this stage. We never get to the second stage boot. So at the minute, the known causes are uh, no or bad EMMC, um, current limited by the supply, which is very unlikely, or one that isn't in here yet, because I'm simply still writing this at the moment, is, as I mentioned, the second stage regulators here and here, and obviously a failing uh, CPU regulator on the back, so the main voltage regulator. So let's check all them now. That's at 4 volts, powered up. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with measuring the um, main vCore regulator, the power management IC. This is responsible for many, many voltages. 
Now what you have to be careful of is keep an eye on your bench power supply so you can see that it is drawing 200 milliamps or drawing something because these can just turn off or go to sleep while you're in the middle of testing and go back to one milliamp. So if it does that, you won't get any readings. This chip doesn't have any power regulation until we tell it to turn on with the little jumper here. So by touching these together, we are simulating turning the console on. I can see on my bench I've got 200 milliamps. So I know we're now turned on. So now let's measure the core voltages. Now, I haven't written that on the wiki yet. I'm doing that today. But we're just going to put the ground lead on ground. And I'm going to probe these now. So this one should be uh, 1.15, which you can see we get. This should be 1, but it normally pulls to 0.95 sometimes. That's healthy. Those three are all the same. This is power input from the BQ charger. So that's literally our bench power supply of 4 volts coming in. So that's fine. This is a 1.3 volt regulator normally yep 0.35 regulator simply generates the voltage for these low dropout regulators over here i believe it's uh these two but i've done a diagram of where all these go so that's healthy anyway this should be 1.8 which it is and now the voltage is down here we should have 3.3 on here which i don't know where this comes from yet if anyone knows let me know this is an input into the regulator that generates the voltage for either side here. So these two are outputs, and this one is the 3.3 volt input. But I'm not sure what generates that voltage. This doesn't generate the 3.3, it gets given it, but also doesn't seem to use it. So this will be zero, this will be zero. This next one's zero. And the next one is 1.05, which is correct. The bottom one, even though it has a test pad on here, Sometimes you get nothing coming out of here. Depends on the console. I've noticed I have one that generates nothing here and others that generate this 1.05. I'm not sure what causes this voltage line to trigger, but if you have nothing here, it doesn't stop a full system boot. So it's not really an issue there. Moving up to the top, this is another regulator here, which has got one volt. It's normally 1.05, but that's fine. This is the input again from our bench. That's fine. This one should be 2.9 volt. And we're getting nothing on that one. Now, I'm not, again, 100% sure whether this only generates 2.9 at full second stage boot, which I believe it does. I think this is when it engages the RAM, and this will go to the RAM. So I'm 99% sure this one not being 2.9 is not the problem. It simply hasn't got to second stage boot yet. This one is nothing. The next should be 1.2 volt, this little pin here. But if we go safely over to here instead... You can see we're not getting 1.2 volt there either. So what we seem to be missing is the 1.2 volt that's here, but we have 1.05 here, which we don't always get. And we also seem to be missing the 2.9 volt on here. Now, I haven't done enough of these analyses yet to confirm if all of these rails are needed for second stage boot, these low dropouts, they might be. So we might be dealing with a faulty max chip, but I'm not gonna jump to that conclusion just yet. We have all the other voltages ready and they seem to be working. So next up, let's just flip over and take a look at the second stage voltage regulators. These only come on when it does actually attempt to get into second stage boot. So this kind of problem here is if you don't have a working EMMC, this regulator will never spin up anyway. But let's just test out curiosity. So as expected, we have nothing there on the output. Here's the other output, we got nothing. But on the inputs, we get our bench power supply as to be expected. So this is receiving the bench power supply. I think this is the enable trace here, if I remember rightly. Uh, but we're not getting told to turn on because that's the job of the CPU to say, turn on, we're ready for second stage boot. So you can't really test that super easy. We can sort of jump at this trace and force it to go high and test that it loads. Uh, we can also simply put voltage on the outputs, put like one volt into here to see if there's dead shorts there. But a similar issue here. This will not output until it's told. But as expected, we also have the input. So this is a situation where we could prove, in a sense, if the CPU is loading, 
Uh, but because we're at the kind of no EMMC stage where it may or may not boot, the only way to really see visually if this is actually booting is to run an RCM on it. So if we wanted to run an RCM, we have to use a special jig, basically shorting a pinout on one of the Joy-Con rails, uh, do a load of software work and boot it up to see a visual output on the screen. All right, so the only thing I can think here then, because we haven't really gone this far into the documentation yet, I haven't kind of studied this um, issue beyond it normally being an EMMC or the second stage boots. I'm going to just get this working, known working switch, and let's just have a quick look at what goes on with this. All right, so this is a known working switch, and we're more interested in just the current up here, just so I can show you what happens with a working boot switch. So you can see when we boot, you see the 200, and then it should jump to 500. See how it's going above, then to 450, 500. That's the console booting into second stage boot. And then it normally sits around the 4, 500. And then once it's booted, depending on the state, I think this one is a completely fresh switch. Um, so this will basically take a while to go to sleep because it'll be sitting on the animation screen where it asks you to insert the Joy-Cons. But if it was an already set up switch, it'd go to the home screen and then dim and then go to sleep. And you'd see this drop to like eight milliamps. Oh, there you go. So it's now gone to 12. So it's now fell to sleep. So it's working and that's what you'd expect. So let me just show you what happens. If I just remove the EMMC, and this is the same as having a bad EMMC, watch the current draw now. So we apply power, we switch on, and you can see it just jumps to 220 milliamps and sits there, and it doesn't ever get past that first stage. And this is exactly the issue we see on um, the other board, now, I've also seen this where this second stage boot is bad. Uh, and in fact, I even have that board here, which I robbed it off because I fixed another one with this issue. And you can see I've just put new reg. I know this reg's dead because I took it off a board that needed the working one, and I just simply put this back on here. So this one won't boot, even though it's got an EMMC. And also, by the way, don't get these EMMCs mixed up because when you do, uh, it's almost impossible to tell if your switch stops working, which EMMC goes with which console. Let's just take this other known working one, except the fact that this regulator is known to be bad because I purposely put a bad one back on. And let's just observe the current on this one. So same again, just apply four volts down there and power on. Now you can see that's slightly different. When the EMMC was good, it's kind of jumped up to 200 and then dropped to 140. Now whether that's because this is partly on or whether I'd got other issues with this board that I wasn't sure of. I haven't done enough analysis to be absolutely sure, but that's shown slightly different behavior. However, let's also do the same. Let's remove the MMC. And let's just see if there's no EMMC and a bad second stage chip. Yeah, so it doesn't get past. So it is looking like it's EMMC potentially because this board is going to the 200 milliamps and sitting there and when you connect it, it gets past that, changes behavior, and then this chip fails to load. So you see a difference in current. So let's just reconfirm that and reinsert the EMMC. So when it's got a working EMMC, but a bad regulator, yeah, it jumps up and drops down. So, so far, the only behavior I've seen where it sits at 200 is a bad EMMC. The other thing we can do is let's just prove these power rails on the back or um, the 2.9 volt and the 1.2 I believe it was when they boot I've got a feeling they are second stage boot only so when the console is fully loaded from the MMC and wants to do a full boot then I think it enables these regulators so this will be based on we can basically remove the MMC to force it to not get second stage boot, measure the regulators then compared to now. So this has got everything on it needs to do full boot. If we power it up. And there's the 2.9, so you get the 3.9 above. So yes, this 2.9 is present on this one. 
And this one, yes, you see, is gone. And this one is 1.2. So the 1.2 rail and the 2.9 rail seem to only appear when it's in second stage boot. And this 1.05 rail seems to disappear. So let's just prove that by removing the EMMC. So this now won't get to second stage boot. It'll stay in first stage again. Let's just turn it on. And now do we get this back? Yes, we do. So that is an indication we're in first stage boot. And the 2.9 is not there. And the 1.2 isn't there. So yeah, that confirms that the 2.9 and the 1.2 are second stage boots. And the 1.05 that's normally here is actually a first stage only regulator that then turns off. For now, everything that I know about the switches is telling me this one has a bad EMMC, which might be the case. Let's just boot this up again. And let's boot the console once more. Now we seem to be fairly stable there. So let's just disconnect the MMC. And you just want to be careful when you do this. And I'm going to apply a fix to this as we do it because under here it's glued to uh, or sticky taped to this heat shield. It's a really bad idea because the MMC is a BGA device that is connected to a firm board. So if we look down, you can see the balls. And in fact, you can already see it's kind of got a bend to it. See that slight bend? I know the camera isn't exactly ideal here, but you can see the bend in that. Um, so we're going to line it up with like a straight edge there. See the slight bend in the... The chip here this ends slightly lifted but either way the point is these balls under here are solid solder joints and when you're lifting it off the board and doing this you're applying a bending force to this board and it in fact it even looks like somebody's previously taken this off potentially although i doubt it because it did look pristine when i opened it but anyway the point of what we're saying here is i would remove this tape and not re-stick it down because you don't want it bending uh, the MMC. I'm just going to get some IPA. Let's just start by giving it a good soaking in IPA, which will help with contacts. I know it looks perfectly clean, but these can be just simply bad contact. Let's just try the boot again. And we try all the basic non-soldering things to begin with. We don't start with reflowing components until we're sure we need to do it. So you can see that hasn't really changed anything. Still stuck at the same spot. Let's try without the MMC, so there's no EMMC at all. Let's see if it seems to do anything with you know, power draw and reading. See, it doesn't seem to do a thing. It doesn't even seem to change the reading to the EMMC, even the slightest. But either way, let's just reflow this chip. So, a little bit of flux, not too much. You don't want it bubbling and sliding the chip. Hot air gun. So, my hot air is just currently at 480 and... 60 speed so 480 degrees celsius and 60 speed so it's quite a relatively low heat it's only a thin board with one component on so it's probably suitable and i'd estimate this to take probably another 20 to 30 seconds you don't want to nudge too much but i think we can already see you can see that it's already moving so once you can nudge it like that it's all reflowed so that's all there is to that once it's cooled, uh, we will reinstall it in here. And then I think if that didn't work, I'd want to leave this board until we have enough information 
to either scope the MMC or find a way to detect uh, when you get this kind of issue. So we could maybe put RCM in, and RCM will allow us to completely ignore second stage boot. And in theory, this console gained to 200 milliamps. You should be able to boot into uh, a simple fast boot menu showing a screen. So you should be able to install this into the Switch properly, fully boot it with the screen turning on, the backlight working, but you won't be able then to load um, a payload. You'll just be able to get the basic emulation, the basic RCM uh, fast boot bin loading. And that'll kind of prove everything is working and it is just a second stage boot or EMMC, so it's one of these. That will absolutely prove, as far as I've figured out, that they're the only two things involved in failing to boot past this point. But fingers crossed, let's just see what we're flowing um, the EMMC did, if anything. So let's apply power. And let's just jump start this. And 220, I think it was 195 before, so it's slightly changed, but that's probably just temperature. Let's give this one more go. See if we get anything. And unfortunately, just the same. So I'm pretty sure... Again, based on the knowledge I have at the moment, and pretty much the first thought before we even tried to fix anything, is when it gets stuck at that 200 milliamps, it's almost always um, this EMMC simply being faulty. It's once been the second stage boot regulator, but I've never had it be anything else. So the only way we can prove EMMC is using RCM. That allows us to boot an unofficial version of Switch firmware, as well as custom homebrew stuff but the importance of it is it allows us to one check the screen and the backlight and everything else work and two it allows us to enable these regulators when we force it to boot into some firmware the cpu will trigger these regulators to enable thereby we can prove this regulator works this regulator works we can flip over and measure the second boot stage uh, outputs of this regulator and do a full test that the entire console is working as expected so the RCM is definitely the next step for this console. Again, I don't like blind swapping anything. I expected reflowing the EMMC to potentially work or reflowing the connector because I'm sure this is what it's going to be. But let's prove it next by jumping into RCM and I'll show you how to do that and get this board hopefully fully up and running. That's it for this one. I hope you've learned some techniques and some skills here. Don't forget to jump in our Discord and check out our wiki for all this information, guides, tutorials and free knowledge. And I hope you guys find it useful.